G'day everyone, how's it going? Clonezilla is the way to go currently for me. And I know that it can be a little bit uh, confusing um, and a bit difficult to understand. Um, this is all my gear, by the way. And um, I'm going to uh, do this video for you all um, from start to finish. That is obtaining Clonezilla, putting it onto a USB stick, and going through the motions of uh, backing up um, Linux partitions, but it is also relevant to Windows, and I will touch on the Windows side of things as well. And I'll be just using the computers I have in front of me here. Um, so to start with, you wanna get Rufus and download that. And we go on to the next bit. Uh, oh, basically you'll need to find yourself a USB stick of some sort. This one I found, um, well, I've just decided I'm gonna go with this one. Whatever's on it, it, I don't need. So I'll just use this one as the live USB um, bootable sticky thing um, that will have eventually uh, Clonezilla on it uh, via Rufus. Stop dribbling and move on. I've got three computers basically here in front of me. I've got a little Windows box there. That's the machine I'm gonna put Rufus on and um, apply the uh, Clonezilla software to um, to this this USB sticky thing. Now this computer here, this is, run, this is a Lenovo touchscreen thing and it's actually got uh, a dual boot um, verge a system on it. It's got, uh, it's got the original Windows 10 on it. And I've also managed to stuff on there a, uh, a version of uh, Linux Mint. Um, and this is also, this is a, yes, it's an iMac, but it runs Linux Mint as well. It's a two, circa 2009, 2010 machine, um, which I got off my niece. Um, I'm, I'm yet to give her the hundred bucks. Um, that I said I'd, I'd give her. That was months ago now. Uh, eventually, she'll get it. I mean, that's what happens when you live in the Blue Mountains, I suppose. Is, um, yeah, you're a long way away. Anyway, um, somehow the computer made its way down from her place to my place, and I'm yet to give her 100 bucks. And it runs Linux Mint fine without any modification. It had a problem with the hard drive in it. I put uh, a three terabyte hard drive in it, and... Um, it also dual boots. It dual boots into either Mac OS, I think it's, uh, yeah, High Sierra, or um, Linux Mint. It runs Linux Mint uh, beautifully. Anyway, here we go. Um, a program which is pretty good to have uh, on any of your machines or all of them is AnyDesk. AnyDesk provides you with a way to, uh, you know, basically, um, drag files between computers. So this one here is called Splicer. So I'm just gonna um, launch that one. Oh, it's not online. Well, fuck me dead. Here we go. Okay, yeah, there it is. We've got the big green tick. Um, so rather, this is a remote desktop uh, type protocol uh, DV, but it also has enables you to manipulate files. So I'm gonna go into the browse files mode. Um, and um, here we go. So this represents th this computer here and this side over here represents that computer over there. Um, and here's an external drive. And these are the drives, even though I'm in uh, Linux, uh, Linux Mint, it's showing you here um, two external drives I've got, Echo and Hotel. And then the this is the, um, the Lenovo partition, which comes with the computer uh, when you buy it from Officeworks or JB Hi-Fi or whatever. And this is the Windows partition uh, on that uh, as well. And it's picked it up, um, uh, who knows how. Um, so anyway, I'm going to, I know I've downloaded it somewhere. I downloaded it here to Echo and Archives. This is where I keep all my pirated and hacked software that I've downloaded off the net for, some, for bloody years. Uh, probably utilities, it's probably something to do with disk and there's Rufus there. So now we'll go over here to, this is the desktop of uh, this machine here that I'm looking at remotely. 
Okay, and I'm just gonna drop it on there. So I've got Rufus selected there. I now go upload and there, uh, it's already there. It's gone, it's gone, no worries. So now we can go over here, except I'm gonna get the latest version of Clonezilla as well. So uh, let me just, um, uh, just hide that one for the moment and open up um, Chrome. C-H-R. Uh, Google Chrome, this one here, and we've got the Rufus blah blah blah, Clonezilla Live on USB, 27122, uh, stable, okay, um, download, now we don't, don't click that one, okay, because that's, that's there to fuck you up, alright, uh, message to all you bodgy advertisement bloody placement dickheads, fuck off. Okay, if you don't like my swearing either, well then too, too fucking bad. Cause this, this stuff here shits me. Download, right, so select CPU, architecture, blah, blah. Uh, file type, we want the ISO. Okay, ISO, select repository auto, download. And we should have something asking us shortly to, where to download, there we go. Um, and we're going to put it in the dish utilities is, uh, yep, blah, blah, blah. Save. Downloading now the, uh, the ISO. All right. So I'll just reopen this, uh, any desk window, um, with the two machines, uh, side by side. And of course, you know, I could have always just opened up a browser window on this machine and downloaded everything from there, but I'm just, I like to, I like, I like a bit of variation. I, I just like to be able to transfer anything from anywhere. And um, I'm just uh, doing this basically to waste your time. So there's the clones all alive uh, ISO I just downloaded. And I'm gonna send that to the, um, the desktop. And on the other machine, upload, you'll see it appear. There we go, it's just appeared there. And the download window or upload window um, says that um, it's underway. Almost done. Quite a large file, 300, but uh, 300 megabytes, but um, uh, it is a, uh, a live uh, and complete operating system. Here it is over on this computer here. There it is. Right there. Now you've got your little uh, USB sticky thing here. We need to plug that in. Plug that in to this uh, Windows machine with Rufus on it. Okay. Select to choose what happens, whatever. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna blow it away. So we launch Rufus now. Double click on that. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Here we have Rufus device. It's already got it selected for us, the verbatim um, 64 gigabyte um, a USB stick, you beauty. Um, boot selection, disk or ISO image, please select. Um, and then we go over here and we select. Click to select or download. So we go to the desktop and on the desktop is the Clonezilla Live um, ISO, uh, we'll just um, open that. Okay, target system, leave as BIOS or UEFI because that covers all bases, don't have to touch anything. Partition scheme, MBR, leave it as it is, okay. Volume label, 27122-AMD64. You can rename this to Clonezilla if you want, okay. Uh, and maybe we'll just do that. Um, maybe we'll just call it um, Czilla, Czilla. Um, and uh, don't put any spaces in the file name. Uh, we'll put uh, an underscore in there instead. No spaces in file names, okay? FAT32, default, cluster size, default, ready to go, start, and hit the start button if you encounter issues, etc. So we'll just go by the default recommended. 
Uh, select yes to connect with you and download these files. Select no to cancel over it. We'll just go yes, okay? Downloading. Warning, all data on device, right? The will be destroyed. So this is the uh, that thing there, okay? Okay. Damn straight. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Still going, and eventually it'll just say ready again, okay? Grab this out. No worries. So on this little doodad, we now have Clonezilla. Right, so how are we gonna do this? Well, uh, which machine are we gonna clone? Uh, well, actually, we'll do this one, okay, because this is the most sort of complicated one. This is, this is a dual boot machine, uh, Lenovo, UEFI. Um, so it's the most modern uh, machine we have here with the most uh, uh, possibly confusing um, uh, hard disk structure uh, on board on this one. This is a, um, a machine bought from, uh, uh, you know, a retailer. Uh, with Windows 10 already on it and where possible you don't want to you know you don't want to touch the partitions there because there's recovery partitions and other stuff blah 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 uh, but I've also managed to um, shoehorn um, Linux on it as well so the partition structure on the internal hard drive uh, SSD hard drive on this thing uh, makes for um, interesting interesting backing up uh, and um, We'll, uh, we'll run through it as we go. So, um, what do we do? Um, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to just unplug uh, one of the hard drives, one of the external hard drives I've got here. It's the one that I call Hotel. Um, but uh, what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll shut the machine down and unplug that one. But that, that, that USB port is where I'll put the Clonezilla USB sticky. Right, so um, let's shut down uh, this Mint um, and shut it down and we'll just, uh, woohoo, I love looking at system messages. Um, that's shut down now, so I'll just pull this one out, okay, and now I'm going to plug in, uh, get around the other way. And now I'll plug in the Clonezilla, Clonezilla USB sticky. If I've got it around the right way, probably have it. Turn it around. In you go. There it is. Okay. Now behind uh, the computer here, uh, you'll see a little SanDisk external USB uh, drive. Uh, that is a, a primary backup drive for me, and this is where we will image um, this computer's partitions to. Um, the way I back up stuff, right, is such that if the operating system dies, everything is here anyway. I try not to use, for example, on Windows machines, the My Documents structure because that structure is on the C drive. It's on the same drive as the operating system. Any documents, pictures, music, um, or projects that I create go directly onto an external drive. I do not use the My Documents structure on the C drive because that is just nuts. The reason being is that if the operating system in a computer crashes or you're a bit of a mad scientist, particularly if you're mucking around with, with uh, Linux, um, then you, you no, you're not going to mind wiping out the operating system to reinstall it. So long as all your documents are backed up somewhere else. If you've got, if you crash an operating system and all the documents that you've created photographs, music, five years, 10 years or more of, of information that you've created and stored on that computer. If that computer crashes and you don't know what you're doing, you effectively don't have a backup. 
right? But the thing is, if you if you put your documents on an external drive from the word go, then you are creating a backup. The partitions on this computer here, I'll be cloning to that drive. Have it already connected to the computer. All the hard drives that you're gonna use and you're gonna need for backing up, have them all connected to the computer before you boot up Clonezilla. Clonezilla will detect these drives later on in there and I'll show you where, where it occurs. But just, just have them connected before you actually boot Clonezilla. So now the startup procedure. Start up procedure. So to be able to boot from that stick, we have to spam the F12 key, this key here, the F12 key uh, on this computer as we, uh, as we boot up. Okay, um, and normally I think F12 is fairly common for most other computers, but you'll need to figure this one out. How do I um, select which drive to boot from on a computer? On this particular one, the Lenovo, uh, it's F12 as the, as the machine is booting up. It could be different from other computers. I think it's the same for Dell's, but who knows? You'll just need to look that one up. So, boot it up, F12, 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 just keep hitting it, F12, okay? And then you'll have this screen pop up. The boot manager. Boot manager, and you'll have a list here. Hopefully, the one you want will be listed. Limpus Light Verbatim OTG Type C. Okay, fair enough. Um, but what you need to just make sure while you're in this uh, in this menu is that the other drives are also present. By default, uh, Mint, which is a basically a rebuild of Ubuntu, um, that's that's there. Good, no worries. There's the Windows Boot Manager. That's the original Windows 10, which is on this hard drive. And you'll notice that it's basically on the very same disk, Samsung, MZL, blah, 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 SSD drive, basically. And then you've got the, uh, what's called the Olympus Light verbatim USB disk, which has got Clonezilla on it. So what we do is we now go down to that one and we hit enter. Clonezilla, okay? Now, we just hit enter. Basically, the thing about Clonezilla, right, is that um, most, if not all, but most of what you wanna do uh, is, is set up by default. So all the options you get for doing this um, are, you know, are defaulted just by hinting the enter key. So for example, without having to do anything, you'll get a whole, you'll get a few errors there, whatever that come up, but you don't worry about it. So long as you come up to this screen, it shows choose language. And by default, it's English. We're talking English. Um, so all I need to do is just hit enter, right? Keep the default keyboard layout, enter. Okay, it starts running some routine stuff. Start Clonezilla, enter. Device image, work with disks or partitions using images. Enter. <clears throat> local dev, use local device, e.g. hard drive, USB drive. Okay, we're just doing a local backup of our local machine. So again, the default is already selected. Again, you just press enter. Right, this will then pop up. Basically, press enter. But what this is asking you to do is what I recommended you don't do, and that is start connecting devices while you are in Clonezilla. Have your devices already connected to the computer that you want to uh, use prior to you booting into Clonezilla. However, this is the area within Clonezilla that you are now going to think about Oh, what devices am I going to back up to? What am I backing up from? Etc. Etc. If you have any external devices that you need to hook into uh, the computer now, this is where you do it. So hook it in, plug whatever you need to plug in. But in our case, we've already done the plugging in. That's the boot. That's the that's the Clonezilla boot USB stick. 
And then down the back here, you might remember, there's the little sand disc external drive, which we're backing up to. All you gotta do, press enter, all right? So it goes into a bit of a detection phase here, okay? And this is where we now just need to start opening our mind and paying a bit of attention. Now at any point you can continue plugging things in or unplug them, okay? The, the computer is in a sort of state of detection, if you like. Okay, now let's, you just need to look at what, what this is listed now, okay? When it says excluding busy partition or disk, it's probably your page file, okay? Uh, excluding Linux RAID member partition, well there you go. But it's these bottom two that you have to be most particular about or be, be mindful of. Dev, this one here, right, the top line uh, where it says Dev NVMe 0 N1, right, that, that is without a doubt the internal SSD, right, of this Lenovo laptop. The next one, Dev SDA, right, Extreme SSD, Sandisk Extreme Portable SSD, one terabyte. Well, that would be this one here, wouldn't it? Okay, so that's that's the drive we're gonna back up to. Just so long as all the drives that you're interested in are listed here, okay? So we're backing up partitions from the internal drive, yep, to this external drive, cool bananas. Update periodically, press Control C, so we now exit here that we've okay they're the drive they're all the drives that we want right the, the the one we're backing up from and the one we're backing up to press control c to exit this window right control c wasn't that easy now what basically it does now is for for the program to do its thing it needs to continue it needs to continually mount and unmount drives and partitions. Now you just let it do that, that thing, but don't worry too much about it. Now this next screen is where you, it gets a little bit more, a little bit more iffy for you. But the next screen wants to know where you want to back up to, all right? Now have a look at this list of drives that it's put up for you. Okay, all looks very confusing, but there's hints as to what's going on here. The first two, nah, nah, don't worry about them. They're probably, you know, like the boot partitions. 147 gig NTFS Windows. So that would be the Windows partition. 250, 25 gig NTFS, 25 gig? Oh, I don't know about that, but anyway, it says NTFS Lenovo, so that's probably the recovery partition uh, which N Lenovo have in place here. So we're not looking at that either. 1,000 uh, 1, megabyte, one gig, NTFS, win, blah, 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 don't know. But notice how they're all on the same drive, right? Samsung, N N MZVL, Samsung, MZVL, Samsung, MZVL, and then all of that. Right, so they're all partitions on the one hard drive. Ext4, dead giveaway that that is a Linux partition. So 65.2 gig, that is the Linux partition and that's the one we're gonna be backing up today. But how do we isolate that from everywhere else? We'll soon find out. The next one, SDA1, almost one terabyte NTFS Echo. Remember Echo? Echo, Echo, Extreme SSD, Sandis Extreme, Echo is that little buddy there, again. Down the bottom, 57 gig, very fat. There are, I don't know, ah, that's, so that one at the bottom, okay, that one at the bottom is the current boot disk, that is the Clonezilla boot disk verbatim. That's that thing there, right here. What it's asking you to do here is to mount a device to back up to. So what we do is, is we go down with the arrow keys to this one, 
Echo. We're backing up to this drive out the back here. Okay. It prefers you to now tab to the OK. So you press tab once, right? And it now highlights OK, right? Or you can press tab again to cancel. Whenever you make these selections, it's best if you just tab. If you sit there and hold tab, all right, just hold it down. It's just, it's just gonna keep tab, 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 a little, 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 you know, looping between all the different selections. Hit tab until you've got OK, and then hit enter. <clears throat> now, this is one of the default, uh, we're, get, we're going back into some defaults here where all you need to do is hit enter. Skip checking, replacing, uh, repairing the file system before mounting, okay? So just, just go with OK on that one. Tab, OK. Which directory is for the image repository, okay? So here we go. Now, this is now reading the structure of Echo, of the backup drive. And you'll notice that I've already pre-created a folder here Clonezilla Lenny here, right? This computer I call Lenny, Lenny Lenovo. And I've already created a directory called Clonezilla Lenny here. Now, going down and just selecting that, right, and then going done, will not actually put the file in there, right? The, the backup image into there. It will put the image into the root of this hard drive. Okay. What you need to do is, is to make sure that when your part, when your when your images, your backup images, if you want them to go into this right directory here, Clonezilla Lenny here, you actually have to go browse, hit enter, okay, and then leave it as is. You'll see that there's some Lenny images already in there. Then you don't do anything else. You just go done, okay, done. What happens now after hitting done, you'll get this down the bottom. Okay, source dev sda1 clonezilla lenny here. Okay, it's even put the directory clonezilla lenny here. Press enter to continue. Choose the mode to run, beginner, yes please. This is where it asks you what you're doing. Are you backing up the entire disk, the entire internal SSD hard drive of this computer? or are we only backing up the partitions, okay? Or uh, selected partitions. Now, in this case, we're just going to back up the Mint partition. Top selection, by default, is to save the entire drive as an image. That's not a bad thing to do if, if you do not have gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes of music and movies on that hard drive. If you have saved, as I mentioned before, and if you have good backup strategy, all your music and images and video archives and documents will be on an external drive somewhere else. Okay, somewhere else. <clears throat> this means that the internal hard drive of this computer will probably be reasonably free of, of crud, <laughs> right? And you don't really want to, I think, back up an entire hard drive and system drive which has got crud on it. You want to put the crud on an external drive, otherwise it's going to take days. It could take days to image a drive full of movies and music. So this is where you really need to think about your backup strategy in total, right? In my case, I could quite easily back up this entire drive, Windows partitions and all, right? And and I ha I know I know for a fact that I have done a full restore of this entire hard drive and it works. It works. I can do uh, I can leave it at default and say save local disk as an image, the entire disk with all its partitions as one big image, and I can restore it, Windows partitions and all, and it will do it without a problem, without a problem. But in this instance, the best thing to do is to work with partitions. So all we're gonna do, 
All we're worried about in this particular instance is we're going to go to the second option, save local partitions as an image. Okay, and this will enable us to select the whatever partitions are on this drive rather than the whole drive. This top selection is if you want to save the entire damn drive and not just individual partitions. So we go down one, save local partitions as an image, tab to OK, hit enter. This is where we're going to save the image. I'm just going to leave it as is. 2021, 05 representing May, the month of May, and 11. So it's the 11th of May, 2021. I don't know what the 06 means, I don't care. Image, that's what's gonna be called. If you want, you can modify it, put at the beginning of it, right? Um, mint, you can, you can probably just write mint and then underscore 2021 05 A6. I don't know what the A6 means, so I'm gonna get rid of it image. Alrighty, clear as mud so far, tab to OK, alright, OK. The image name is Mint, blah blah blah, excluding busy partition. It will now do some detecting and undetecting. Here are now the partitions laid out. Now if you choose disk to, to back up the entire disk, you won't get this option to choose, right, the partitions. It'll just back up the entire disk. Here we have the partitions, the, the partition layout of the internal hard drive. And you'll see, as we saw before, the first two, one, two, won't worry about them because they're probably boot partitions. The Windows partition, we're not worrying about that today. We're not going to worry about the Lenovo partition, the, the recovery partition. Um, so we just uh, basically go down here and hit spacebar to unselect that one. It's the very bottom one, right? The, the Linux partition, the X4, uh, the X4 partition, we're going to, we're interested in. That's all we're interested in backing up. So I'll hit space. And you can see that it's all on the same drive. We're dealing with this one source drive, Samsung, 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 Samsung. Okay, but we're only backing up the one partition, that's the Linux partition. Okay, we hit tab once to go to OK. Check that we've got that partition selected that we're interested in. And we hit enter. Choose the compression option. Just choose the default tab. Okay. Skip checking repairing source file system. Leave it as it does, as its default tab. Okay. But we do want to check the saved image. All right. So all the selections selected by default by Clonezilla are sane and sensible defaults. Yes, we do want to check the saved image once it's been created. So we leave it as as, as default. We just hit tab and then. Okay, don't encrypt the image. Not really necessary, just for us, okay? No need, no need to encrypt it. Again, a sane and sensible default. We just hit tab, okay. Now, once everything is finished, the sane and sensible default is to choose reboot or shut down. So we just hit tab and then enter, okay? Now we're into it. Press enter to continue. Don't worry about this. Forget it. Press enter to continue. Are you sure you want to continue? We just hit Y and then enter. Okay. And we're off and running. It, uh, it starts up part clone. And now we just sit back and we wait a little while. Once the backup is, do is done, it will check the file. Okay. Starting to check image. So it's checking the image for you to make sure that there's no errors. And when it's all done, you'll get this. It wasn't hard, was it? There's a bunch of uh, nice information there. Uh, at the end, you just gotta hit enter. And um, uh, I suppose just go power off or reboot if you want, reboot.
we will reboot. So, that's it. Um, now, without touching anything, we don't have to touch F12 now. Uh, basically, it'll come into the, um, into the boot manager uh, by default on this machine, it's Linux, but you can see if I wanted to, I could go to Windows Boot Manager. But it's, uh, it's now going to just um, boot into Mint. Um, I like looking at uh, the, uh, the system messages at the beginning. Um, and um, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna make sure that the, uh, the image file is, um, is on, um, has been created. And then I'm gonna blow away this system Right and restore. Um, so uh, where did we put it? We put it in Echo, I believe. There's this hard drive called Echo. So there's the uh, the Clonezilla uh, boot uh, USB stick, or still still stuck uh, in the uh, computer. Echo. Uh, where did we put it? We put it in Clonezilla Lenny here. Clonezilla Lenny here, and wouldn't you know it? Mint 2021. Today's date. Right, 11th of the 5th, 2021, okay? And the thing is, is that um, it has, it's basically um, inside that folder is all these files, okay? Uh, where would the image be? Well, it might be it there. Um, let's view by detail. Yeah, where's the biggest file in this? 4.1 gigabytes thinks it's an audio file but don't worry about it don't worry it's all good image there we go you can tell that it was modified today tuesday 11th of may 2021 so we're all good uh there's another image file but anyway uh da -da -da, da -da -da. everything's there believe me everything is there it's no problem for me to wipe out this partition and restore it with the image that we've just created the, the more you do it the more confident you get. And the only way to understand Clonezilla and the only way to understand your backup strategy is to go from end to end. Do it from end to end. And get scared. Be afraid. But it's the only way to understand your backup strategy. In the early days, okay, in the early days of computing, Tower, I had tower computers, right, which had multiple hard drives in them. And you could swap the hard drives in and out. And you could buggerize around all you like doing backups and getting your backup strategy right um, by blowing away operating systems um, on, on hard drives that you didn't care about. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult these days when you're dealing with laptops and SSDs that you that are, are, like you can't actually physically disconnect and say right well I know that whatever I do now is not going to affect that drive that's that's a drive which has got an operating system on it which I don't want to you know I don't want to blow away or touch or you know because it's got stuff on it I want and it would just make life a misery but Clonezilla has proved to be very good very effective, very reliable. So, so reliable that I am now going to blow this operating system away for you and restore it. And later, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a complete backup of this entire hard drive with Windows on it as well. And I'm going to blow that drive away and I'm going to restore them and it's going to work. So everything's exactly as I left it. I've got the Clonezilla uh, boot USB um, stick in there. We've got the, uh, the backup device where we put the image. That's all connected still, nothing's changed. All we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna reboot and um, uh, into the Clonezilla, Clonezilla boot, uh, boot drive, boot USB. Ding a ding a ding a ding a ding ding ding. Um, let us restart. And once it's restarted, right, spam the F12. Spamming F12, 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 F12. Here we go. 
What do we want to do? We want to boot from this one, okay? We know that this bottom one here is the Clonezilla verbatim USB sticky. Okay, enter. We just hit enter again. come up with a few sort of oh, a few complaints but really it doesn't really matter so long as you get to get to here and I'm just going to turn the um, the light off on this phone here we go enter 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 Work with disks or partitions using images. Enter. Use local device. Enter. Down here, right? Press enter to continue. Enter. Detect, detect, detect. Right. Are the, are the drives of interest uh, listed here? Samsung. Right, that's the, that's the internal SSD that we're going to be restoring a partition to. Extreme SSD, Sandix, Sandix, <laughs> Sandix. I wouldn't want to be sand, my dick. Um, Sandisk Extreme Portable SSD. Yes, that's where the image file is and where we want to restore from. All good. Control C to exit this window. Detect, 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 blah, 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 mount, unmount, mount, 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 unmount, mount, mount, unmount. Okay, now we need to mount the device that, uh, where the image is being restored from. So it's, it's, it's almost like the same as when we saved the image in the beginning. So basically we just have to come down here to this one, echo. That's where the image is. Tab, okay. Skip checking, repairing the file system before mounting. Uh, that's right. Okay. Where is the image? Clonezilla, Lenny here. And then we need to browse, right? Hit enter and we just leave it. And then we go tab, tab and done. Okay, source. Device, SDA1, Clonezilla, Lenny here. Okay. Then enter to continue. Beginner. Okay. Restore partition. We're not saving this time. We've already saved a local partition. Restore an image to local disk. Restore an image to local partitions. That's what we want. Restore an image to local partitions, not the entire disk. We are restoring this Mint Linux partition only to local partitions. Tab, okay. Choose the image file to restore. Mint, that's what we called it. I, as you can see, I've got a couple of other backups here, but this is the this is the most recent one. Mint, eleventh of the fifth, twenty twenty one. Tab, okay. So that's pretty much it. That's the only choice you get. So it has to be pretty well correct. Okay, enter. Choose the target partition. So generally you will be able to identify where the partition is that you're trying to restore to. So as we know that these top two are probably um, boot sectors, don't want them. That's the Windows partition. That's the Windows Lenovo um, recovery partition, right? That is some other drive I couldn't recognize, but it's NTFS anyway. X4, that is an absolute certainty that that is the partition that we want to restore to. Okay, so we're going to blow away that partition and restore to it. Okay, and that is the Mint Linux partition. X4 generally means it's a it's pretty good 
pretty good dead certainty that uh, that's going to be the uh, a Linux partition in this case. Okay. Okay. Check the image before restoring. Oh yeah, you could if you wanted to. Uh, the sane and reasonable default is to check the image before restoring. Okay. You might remember that it did a check of the image anyway um, uh, when we actually did the the, the image, uh, when we actually created the image. Uh, but uh, the sane and reasonable default here is to is to actually check it. So we'll go tab and OK. Uh, choose reboot, shutdown, etc. when everything is finished. Tab. OK. So it's saying do not create the partition table on the client hard disk. Do not restore the, the, uh, the master boot record on the client. Okay. Um, that's all fine. No worries. Because all we're doing is restore of a partition only, not an entire disk. Press enter. Okay. It's now going to, it's now just checking the image before it does anything else. And once it's uh, successfully uh, completed the um, checking of the uh, of the image file, it says uh, the image of this partition is restorable. All the images of partition in this image were checked and they are restorable. Mint 2021 image. Uh, I have never come across an error yet, so I can't give you any explanation of what to do if you have any errors. Uh, this kind of assumes that uh, uh, the steps up until now have all been performed um, well enough, that uh, there will be no errors and that everything is going smoothly. So, all good, all looking pretty good. All you basically got to do is go read this one. The following step is to restore an image to the hard disk partitions on this machine. Okay. <clears throat> warning, warning, warning. The existing data in this hard disk partitions will be overwritten. Now, basically, you've just got to have faith that Clanezilla and what you're doing is that you are restoring a partition, not the entire hard disk. OK, that's why it's got hard disk slash partitions. You, you, but what we've been doing and up until now is a restore uh, of a partition only. So we'll just we'll just take this bit here. Okay, machine, whatever. And, you know, up until now, it's all pretty pretty much been consistent. Anyway, are you sure you want to continue? Uh, yeah, okay. And then I'll ask you again, okay? <laughs> okay, are you sure you want to continue? Yeah, hell yeah. So let me ask you again. The following step is to blah, 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 okay? But you know what? I'm pretty confident at this, so I'm just going to go yes, and I'm going to hit yeah, enter. So we're off and running. Guess what? It's finished. Didn't take long. Cloned successfully. All right. Yep, 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 yep. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Sure. See, the thing is, it's too bloody late now, okay? So whatever this says is either going to just make you weep or it's going to make you go, yeah. But in the, at the moment, it's all good. It's just doing a few uh, few things, a uh, few tidying up little thingy, thingy, thingy wangles, whatever. And you can just sort of browse this while it does that. Um, it's just uh, updating a few things. Hmm. Insert elevator music here. And yep, done. All good. So all good, no worries. When everything is done, remember to use power off reboot or follow the menu, yeah, yeah. So press enter to continue. Uh, and then um, uh, we will now go into uh, reboot. You can see that there's a couple of other stuff there, but just in the basic course of backup and restoring, uh, you'll probably just want to reboot. Tab and OK. So it'll reboot shortly. And um, it'll be exactly as I left it. I have, in this process, 
um, of a restoration, blown away a Linux partition and restored it for absolutely no reason except for the experience. And this is what this is what it's all about. You have to do you have to include in your backup strategy an end-to-end, -end, right? You have to do end-to-end -end testing of your backup strategy. That means blowing away completely good operating systems and restoring them uh, to, uh, to you know, satisfy yourself that in, in the future, when you do have a real problem, um, that, you'll be, that you'll know what to do and you'll be organized Voila. So what's next? Well, I reckon we should blow the entire hard drive away, including Windows, and do a backup and restore of that as well. What do you reckon?